75, Austin Powers and Fosha. And now, <laughs> it is time to say goodbye. <laughs> and that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. What's going on, dudes and dudettes? So, yeah, as you can see or kind of tell already, doing a newer light setup, got a good deal. On that bigger light bulb, the ring light, so that was pretty cool. Definitely looks a lot less dark in here as if I'm filming at night, even though I usually film in the afternoon or morning, so it's kind of cool. I don't know if anybody has seen this. I don't know if I put in a video where, yeah, I was able to get this on my birthday. I got an Amazon gift card, and yeah, it's freaking gigantic. If people know me in real life, you know how big my head is, so yeah, that's pretty big. So yeah, definitely very excited about that piece to my collection but yes to get on with sports stuff why here so yes usc did get a recent commit from a three-star defensive tackle same his name is i haven't heard it said out loud yet but i believe it's dejon lafitte or Laf lafiti i don't know about i don't know which way it is but hopefully i didn't butcher it too much but yes he is a three-star d tackle from ontario california which is actually pretty close to where i'm at so that's pretty cool and apparently he's a rising star, so pretty sure by the time he gets on campus, he will be a four-star because how many people are trying to actually get him after he committed to USC? Because he recently just picked it up within the last couple of weeks, the offer from the defensive line coach, uh, Sean Nua. So, yeah, he already wanted to come to USC really bad, so definitely want to get more of those guys on the team. So, yeah, overall, it's a pretty good get for USC so far. And then Brandon Staley, the head coach of the Chargers, officially said that Justin Herbert is day-to-day. -day. After a couple of days back this week of practicing, he hasn't, I don't think he's been practicing with the team. Um, I know he's been doing some throws uh, separately a lot. Some of the videos they've been showing and some of the reporting. So yeah, hopefully it gives him a chance to play, to be able to not take any of those extra hits during practice, but doesn't mean he's going to have the greatest game because you definitely need practice and those little extra hits to get you ready but overall if he can't go hopefully he says no and doesn't try to play and make it worse that could be the worst thing the outcome for the chargers and a couple of usc players are on the mend or maybe looking to transfer so gary bryant jr the wide receiver from corona centennial pretty close out here he was a really highly regarded recruit when he decided to go to usc one of the better receivers in his class a few years back but after all these transfers and everything like that all these new guys on the team he didn't really have a spot they kind of just ended up moving him to punt returner and kick returner and even then he wasn't really flashing or doing anything good so after the first three games he kind of just realized and decided that he's gonna redshirt this year which means he's not gonna play the rest of the year technically you can do you could play up to four games and still red shirt and this year doesn't count towards your eligibility so he technically could come into another game say if somehow the trojans get into the national championship game i'm sure he'll want to play in that but he has as of right now he will red shirt to be able to save one more year for next season and it's looking like he might be looking to transfer and enter the portal um he, i know lincoln riley said there are going to be some more discussions to see if they could bring him back or not but Kind of looks like he will be going for a better opportunity somewhere else where he could be the either the main starter or second or third string even because here at USC he for some reason dropped so far even though he was a talented dude it kind of sucks but yeah hopefully he does find a home and maybe not too close not anyone USC plays next year or even UCLA hopefully not then Romello Height who was one of the better transfers that USC did get from Auburn this last spring and summer he was doing really good he actually was starting for USC the first couple games but then had a shoulder injury pretty early in that Stanford game has been out since and then Lincoln Riley updated everybody today that he did have a shoulder procedure pretty much having surgery on that shoulder and apparently it's gonna most likely keep him out for the rest of the season so it's probably had to be like a two and a half to three to four month process of recovery and by that time there's pretty much going to be no more college football very sad to think of that future but 
Yeah, it does suck because he was even playing over the number one player in the country a few years back, uh, Corey Foreman, at his same position. That's already at USC. He went over him, and now they're going to have to rely on a guy who had all his accolades coming in from Corona Centennial and hasn't really lived up to the hype. So we'll see what he can do. He has been playing more, but hasn't really you know shown out stats as far as tackles or sacks or anything like that. So we will see. Then a couple of Duke players ended up signing some contracts to get on some teams. So Frank Jackson ended up signing with the Phoenix Suns to a non-guaranteed deal, I believe it was. So he's going to have a chance to make the roster, and they always like to keep a lot of guards on that team. So I think he has a nice chance to be able to make that roster. And then Marquise Bolden, the ex-center for Duke, he believe he's getting some type of training cap invite to the Milwaukee Bucks. I know he's been playing some of those European or you know games for your team where you were born or where you're where you're from your family's from so he's been doing pretty good and throwing up stats out there so the Bucks thought he was good enough to bring into camp so good luck to him should be exciting to see those guys play again then Drake London the ex-USC receiver after having some pretty good solid first couple weeks in the NFL especially last week getting a touchdown he is as of right now they say plus 600, so I believe he is the favorite betting-wise to win the Offensive Rookie of the Year in the NFL this year. So that's pretty cool, especially for, I mean, he was a top eight pick overall, so really not that crazy. But I know he has an injury history, so I'm guessing that's why he wasn't high betting-wise. But as of right now, since he's healthy, he's the overall favorite, so that's pretty cool. And then a pretty interesting college football game is happening this weekend it's usually a bigger event when these two teams meet Duke and Kansas when it's in basketball but for some reason both these teams that's why I never really followed Duke basketball or Duke football because they've kind of been crappy teams they've always put out but it's probably hard to get a lot of really talented guys on the roster when you have to have such a high GPA and good scores and stuff to even get in to the school but Yes, both of these teams are 3-0, and so there will be a loser at the end of this game. And even like the last last season combined records, it was like 5-19, and something like that, I think the picture said. So, yeah, it's going to be looking pretty good. I know I've heard of, I've been watching a little bit of Duke here and there the past couple weeks, and Riley Leonard, their quarterback, is a pretty cool dual threat quarterback. He could throw and run, so he's pretty exciting to watch, so it'll be Pretty interesting to see this. I'll definitely take a look at it this Saturday coming up. So, yeah, pretty interesting. Never thought I'd be excited for a Kansas Duke football game. It's pretty crazy. And then the On3 Network put out a post saying a couple of their reporters of their like top Heisman favorites as of this second. And Caleb Williams, for both different reporters, is either number one or he has the second best odds to win, according to those guys. So, at least he's getting some recognition here early. I know a lot of other places don't really consider what he's been doing so far that great because of the competition, but it is numbers. Everyone else is playing crappy competition right now also. So either way, it's pretty cool to see him get some recognition so far. Then Taj Edi, an ex-USC basketball player, hadn't really been on any NBA teams, but did sign with a Slovakian team out there in Europe and it's actually the same team that ex-USC player Isaiah White is on as of right now so that's pretty cool they're going to be reuniting out there in Slovenia Slovakia I don't know which one it is so yeah good luck to those guys and good luck in Europe should be very cool to see and then both Nelson Aguilar and Amon Ross St. Brown according to the PFF grades you know analytics wise they were considered the third and fourth best wide receivers this last weekend in the NFL which is pretty cool obviously you heard me mention them the last video how great they did because of my ex-USC guys showing out in the NFL but I mean Amon Ross St. Brown is just crazy I mean he just recently made history I know I said in a couple of videos ago that he was tied for a lot of history, but he actually made the history official where he's the first player in NFL history in six straight games to have eight receptions or more and at least one touchdown. So 
that's pretty awesome that he's already breaking records and everybody's already penciling him in as a Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer, which is crazy. But yeah, overall, he's a fantasy football guy because he definitely either won a lot of leagues this last week or in my case, he beat me because he was on the opposing team. So I, I still love him. He's a USC player, but yeah, it was pretty tough to watch. And he was also named the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. So that's always a big get as well for these players individually. And I just saw that he was recently interviewed on SportsCenter as well. So, of course, this guy is just making the runs, getting the Detroit Lions name out there and his name out there as well. So, congrats to him. It's definitely well-deserved from this ex-USC player. And then, yes, the Lakers were in the news a little bit earlier this week saying that apparently the Indiana Pacers sent a trade off for a buddy healed Miles Turner and those future first round picks from the Lakers and Russell Westbrook all together and the Lakers obviously declined it because they don't know the future of certain guys to be able to sign them or not sign them including Turner when they, who the person they get back and they don't really want to part with both of the first round picks so they kind of declined it pretty much they are still in negotiations or somewhat talking but then another team that came up recently was the uh, San Antonio Spurs, they kind of look like they're willing to go full tank mode and, you know, even get, if they're going to bring in Russell Westbrook, they're most likely going to buy him out and just try to get rid of as much t talent that they do want to give up, except keep some of the better ones. Most likely like a Keldon, Keldon Johnson and all those other guys. But yes, as of right now, it's kind of, it seems like the team that's going to most likely end up getting Westbrook, but I wanted to do a quick fan spo mock trade i already did one the other day but that included bogdan bogdanovich from indiana who actually went and got traded to the detroit pistons last night or this morning so i had to scrap that and redo it real quick and it still came out pretty good at least for the char or chargers the lakers side but they do have to give up quite a few picks draft picks i think they had to give up like five but we're including four teams in this so in this scenario the lakers get Buddy Heald from the Indiana Pacers, Jakob Pertl, the center from the San Antonio Spurs, Doug McDermott, a shooting guard small forward from the Spurs, who's a really good three-point shooter, and Malik Beasley from the Utah Jazz, who's a really good shooting guard small forward. He could play there, but he's a you know do-it-all kind of guy. He could score, rebound, assist, play some defense for you. So he's a nice Swiss Army knife. Swiss Army knife for you. The Indiana Pacers will get. I can't believe I can't read my own writing. But yes, I believe that's Kendrick Nunn from the Lakers, the point guard. And Romeo Langford, I kind of threw in here because I saw he was on the Spurs trying to get rid of some more money from the Spurs so they can take on Westbrook's contract. But he did also go to school in Indiana. I believe he was Mr. Indiana out of high school. So that would be a kind of cool homecoming for him if it were to happen. And then the Lakers were also sending... A 2023 second round pick and a 2024 second round pick. They have a couple of second round picks next season from a couple other teams they made trades with. So sending those away. And then, like I mentioned, the San Antonio Spurs will get Westbrook. But because they are taking on that bigger contract, the Lakers will have to send both of those first round picks to those future first round picks, 27 and 29, to the San Antonio Spurs where... I think there's a scenario in this where there's less players. It's Westbrook and maybe the 27 first round pick and you can get get it done like that. But I kind of want more of a revamped, more depth on the Lakers roster than it is right now. So I'm going to go with that. Also, the Utah Jazz are in this because we are getting Malik Beasley from them to the Lakers. And I decided to throw in Max Christie, the rookie that the Lakers drafted this year. Because they're looking for young talent anyways. So they would just take him on for a guy like Beasley. And the 2023 20, second round pick, the Lakers had another one as well. So sending that. And then I threw in O'Shea Brissett from the Indiana Pacers. Just to kind of evenly match up all the salaries and the money going out, coming in. All that stuff. And then it's another young guy that the Jazz could either decide to keep or just let go. Because they they're trying to just get as young as they can. 
kind of like a lot of these other teams who are trying to tank. So another young guy, and you only have to give him a second round pick, in my opinion, for Beasley. So it should all work out. So yeah, thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.